Hello students and welcome back to our class. In today's video, we will discuss lesson 3 of chapter 1, Psychological Perspective of the Self. At the end of our discussion, you should be able to identify the different ideas in psychology about the self, create your own definition of the self based on the definitions from psychology, and lastly, Analyze the effects of various factors identified in psychology in the formation of the self. Start our discussion with this statement. I am who I am. Ako ay ako. Diba? Narinig natin, narinig natin yun or minsan sinasabi natin yun. Pero, this statement begs the question. If you are who you are, then who are you that makes you who you are? O, di ba? Ang lakas makatang twister. Ano yung tanong? Ano yung meron sa tanong? Di ba? Kung ikaw ay ikaw, paano mo nasabi? Di ba? If you are who you are, kung ikaw ay ikaw, anong parte ng pagkatao mo, ng behavior mo, ng personalidad mo, ang bumubuo ng sarili mo? Di ba? What makes you who you are? Dito pumapasok yung concept ng self. At sabi ko nga, definition of the self changes or iba't iba ang definition ng self from philosophical perspective to sociological perspective and now in psychological perspective. In 2014, Janggiani and Tari defined the self. According to them, self is the sense of personal identity and of who we are as individuals. Under psychological perspective of the self, we will discuss seven psychologists. First, we have William James and his concept of self. Next, we have David Lester with multiple versus unified self. Then Donald Winnicott with true versus false self. And then Carl Rogers with self theory. Our fifth psychologist is probably one of the most famous psychologists, if not the most famous psychologist of all time, Sigmund Freud. And we will discuss the importance of the unconscious. Then we'll have Albert Bandura with self as proactive and agentic. And lastly, Carl Jung with self as the central archetype. First, we have William James. William James is the father of American psychology. In 1890, he distinguished two understandings of the self. The self as me and the self as I. Ano ibig sabihin noon? Meron pang me and I yung self. So, distinguish na meron daw dalawa. The me and the I. And this he called the concept of self. Ano ba yung pinagkaiba ng I-self and the me-self? Simulan natin sa I-self. Ano yung I-self? I-self is the met metaphysics. Or basically, it's concerned with the existence of the self. Ano ibig sabihin? Okay. Yung I-self refers to the self that knows who he or she is. Alam mo kung sino ka. This is the thinking, acting, and feeling self. Okay. Everything in your mind is the I-self. Okay. It reflects the soul of a person or what is now thought of as the mind and is called the pure ego. Ano yung pinagkaiba? Yung me-self naman is the experience of the self. Okay. It's the empirical self. It's the, about describing the person's personal experiences and is divided to further categories tulad ng material self, social self, and spiritual self. Kasi dito, we are concerned about the experience. Ano uli yung pinagkaiba? Sa I-self, we are concerned about the existence of the self. It involves the thinking and the feeling self. On the other hand, yung me-self is concerned about the experience of the self. This is the empirical. Okay? So, yun yung pinagkaiba ng I-self and me-self ni James William. Let's end our discussion with a quote from William James himself. Sabi niya, A man's self is the sum total 
of all that he can call his. Not only his body and his psychic powers, but his clothes and his house. Bakit niya nasabi yun? Balikan natin yung discussion natin kanina. Sabi niya, yung self daw can be divided into two, ba? Diba? So, kasama na doon yung psychic powers na tinutukoy niya dito is the existence or the I-self. And of course, yung body or yung clothes and his house would be the me-self, which is about the experience included yung material self. So, sabi niya, self is the sum total of all that he can call his. Our next one is the British-American psychologist, suicidologist, and professor emeritus of psychology at Stockton University, David Lester. Okay, sabi niya, importante sa pag-intindi sa sarili mo, ang maintindihan mo muna ang konsepto ng multiple versus unified self. Sabi ni Lester, the construction of multiple selves varies across different roles and relationships. Ma'am, ano ba yung multiple selves? Kanina pa sinasabi, ano po ba yun? Okay? Multiple selves is basically your different identities. Okay? Paano yun, ma'am? Mabawa ako, si Lara as a student, si Lara as a teacher, as a daughter, Okay, as ate. So, may iba't iba akong selves. At iba't ibang identity rin yun, ba? Diba? Magkakaiba rin naman yung pinapakita natin when we're with friends, when we are with our family, o kaya ako with, uh, with when I'm with my colleagues. Okay? So, ganun. And for you students, usually, nandun kayo sa adolescent stage. Okay? At sa stage na to, pasok yung identity crisis. Ano ba yung gusto mo talaga? At sino ka ba talaga? At yon yung nagiging problema. Kasi, tinatry mo palang i-build yung sarili mo, yung concept of the self mo. Pero, dahil ang dami mo ngang sarili, ang hirap niyang buuin. Dahil, you have multiple selves, okay? Ang nagiging problema, mahirap, Okay? Coping with different selves constitutes a formidable task among adolescents. Kasi, minsan kailangan mo prioritize sino ka ba talaga? Gusto mo ba talagang mag-gitara? O bakit naman gusto mo lang kumanta? Pero napilitan kang mag kasi ina-expect ka ng mga kaibigan mo na mag -gitara. Ano pa ba? Gusto mo ba talagang mag-basketball? O bakit naman mas gusto mo lang talaga yung chess? You're, nandun kayo sa time that you're trying to identify sino ka talaga. And, ang sabi dito, these challenges contribute heavily to the young person's struggle for a unified self. At the end of the day, ang end goal natin is for you to have a unified self. For you to identify sino ka ba talaga. Our third psychologist is Donald Winnicott. Donald Winnicott is an English pediatrician and psychoanalyst. Sabi niya, the self is composed of true and false self. O ayan, di ba? Kanina, multiple and unified self. Ngayon naman, we have true and false self. According to Winnicott, the function of the self is to hide and protect the true self. Okay. The false self and the true self, self-explanatory na rin naman eh, diba? So, let's proceed with the statement. Bakit? Bakit natin tinatry na itago yung totoong sarili natin? Di ba may mga chances, may mga experiences tayo minsan na malungkot tayo pero nagpapanggap tayo masaya kasi ayaw nating malaman ng iba. Kasi ayaw man nating malaman ng iba yung pinagdadaanan natin. Minsan, because we fear na ijo-judge tayo, O kaya, inisip natin, iiwasan na nila tayo. There are cases kung saan uh, we pretend to be someone else so that we can be included in a group. Kaya ganun yung nangyayari. We create a false self to hide our true self. In a way, this is also related to other discussion. Okay. Ito yung false self natin, ito yung social identity natin. 
Ito yung pinapakita natin sa tao. And yung true self natin is usually itinatago natin. Or, in some cases, ipinapakita lang natin sa mga taong pinagkakatiwalaan natin. We're only honest with the people we respect or people we, we trust. Sabi dito, people tend to display a false self to impress others. Kaya nga nang sabi ko kanina, di ba? Sometimes we pretend to be someone else so we could belong to a group. Kahit na hindi ka mayaman, Dahil yung mga kasama mo mayaman, laging nag melty makikimelty ka rin. Kahit ang totoo, mahirap lang kayo. Kailanganin mo nang maglakad next time kasi wala ka ng budget. We try to impress people. Okay? And this is not easy. Okay? It's not easy to pretend to be someone else. It's not easy to pretend that you're okay. It's not easy to pretend that you're doing fine. Okay? So, of course, ideally, it's better if you show our true self. Okay. Pero, Winnicott added that the self can change depending on situations. Now, this will be our question in our next online discussion. Have you ever experienced hiding your true self? Why? Naranasan mo na ba ang itago yung totoo ikaw? Bakit? Why did you do that? Okay, and I will post a question in our Google Classroom so you can answer. In our next video, we will discuss our fourth psychologist, Carl Rogers, and his self-theory. Thank you for your time and for listening. If you have questions, you know what to do. Bye, class!